So now that you have your FarmBot online and connected to your web app account, you'll want to visit the device page to set up all the parameters for your FarmBot to operate at its peak performance. So to do that, navigate to the device page. And the first thing you want to do is you want to name your FarmBot. So I usually like to name my FarmBot Broccoli Overlord. Type in uh, the name to the name box and press save. Then you'll see the version of FarmBot OS that you're running and the option to update your operating system and also turn on a toggle for auto updates. If you want your FarmBot to just be a totally hands-off experience, then you can do the auto updates, but if you want a little bit more control and uh, over the software updates, then you can keep that toggle to off and uh, press the update button anytime an update goes out. You'll also see on this page the options to restart, shut down, and factory reset your FarmBot. So the restart will, as it sounds, restart your uh, Raspberry Pi and also kind of the Arduino. Uh, that would be useful if you are experiencing some difficulties or need it to uh, maybe go into a configuration mode again. Shutting down your FarmBot will shut down the Raspberry Pi, which then makes it safe for you to unplug the FarmBot from its power source. And factory resetting your FarmBot will uh, just as it sounds, reset everything and your FarmBot will forget its Wi-Fi credentials and uh, your web app credentials. And so it will boot up the Wi-Fi configurator again so that you can either connect it to a different Wi-Fi network or a different web app account profile. And then there's also a, a selection for which type of camera you're using. Uh, all the kits that we provide are using a boroscope USB-based camera, though you can also use the Raspberry Pi camera if you're building your own kit or you want to just use that camera in a different way. So now let's dive into all of the different settings that are available for the FarmBot device. So there's a lot of different settings on here and it might look a little bit intimidating, but just remember that we have uh, by default selected pretty good settings for, for all of the different parameters. So you, you may not need to adjust any of these to get your FarmBot working really well. But in case you want to modify your hardware or you need to tune your FarmBot to perform a little bit better or differently, then this is where you'll want to go to adjust the, the, all the settings. So one of the first sections that you'll want to look at for the FarmBot parameters is the motors section. So there's eight different parameters for the motors. So open up the, the drop down here and you'll see all of those. And again, we've included with, by default in the software uh, recommended values for each of these settings, but this is where you can go in and adjust stuff to make your FarmBot move slower or faster. And we've uh, d documented what each of these parameters do on our documentation hub at software.farmbot.io. So there you can read descriptions of each of the different parameters and uh, learn about each one in more depth. Some of the parameters here are calculated based on your hardware. So the steps per millimeter is what correlates how many motor steps it takes to move one millimeter uh, in any axis. So for the stock FarmBot kits, they have the 20 tooth GT2 pulleys and also a you know, specific lead screw. And so depending on the pulleys and the, the belts that you use on your FarmBot, whether it's a lead screw or belt driven axis, the steps per millimeter value is calculated based on that hardware. And if you look at our documentation hub, you'll see the exact equations used to calculate those values in case you want to change your hardware or you're building your own device. Again, though, with our kits, we've included defaults for uh, our hardware. So, so you shouldn't have to change these at all. One setting that you may want to turn on or off is the always power motors setting. So the always power motors means that when FarmBot is idle, it will keep the motor powered and that locks it in place. This is really useful mostly for the Z-axis so that it prevents the Z-axis from slipping down due to gravity over time. But it can also be useful for the X and Y axes in case you don't want uh, somebody to come up and push your FarmBot and move it by hand. It will keep those motors locked. Uh, so you may want to turn these on, and on or off by default, we have only turned it on for the Z axis because that's the only one that it's really required for. Another setting that you may want to adjust is the invert motor setting. So this is most useful if, for example, you plugged in your motor backwards or you're mounting it in a different orientation that would require it to run in reverse from what it's normally set to run at. You'll also see some settings for the second X motor. With our kits, we have two motors for the X axis, both mounted on the gantry. 
So by default, we have the second X motor enabled and also uh, there's an option to reverse the direction there. Again, in case you wired your farm bot incorrectly or in case you want to mount your motors differently, you can uh, use software to reverse the direction. Uh, some farm bots uh, may not require a second X motor, and in that case, you can actually disable the second X motor altogether. The next grouping of parameters that you'll want to look at is the encoders and end stops grouping. So with our kits, we include rotary encoders on all the motors, and that allows FarmBot to know exactly where it is at all times and also detect stalls. So a stall detection would be useful if a, a child sticks their hand in FarmBot while it's moving, uh, it will detect that and stop its motors. Or if a plant grows onto the tracks and FarmBot runs into it, it will stop its motors. The encoders are also used to calibrate and home your FarmBot so that it uses the encoders to find the maximum and minimum positions that it can travel to uh, because it will, will move very slowly until it runs into the end and then it, it marks that location as either the maximum or the minimum. So with our kits, you'll want to enable your encoders for all three axes. In some cases, you may need to invert the encoder readings. Uh, that would be useful if you're sending your FarmBot movement commands and very quickly it is stopping. That's because it's probably detecting a stall because the, the encoder is reading things in reverse compared to the motor. So you need to have your motors and encoders synchronized and you can do that by inverting the encoders. Again, this would only be necessary if you're inverting your motors or you wired something incorrectly. So it's a setting that you may need to play with, uh, but once it's set correctly, you don't need to adjust it. The encoder scaling value is used to match the resolution of the encoders to the resolution of the motors. On our FarmBot kits, we have provided 360 line per revolution encoders and 200 step per revolution motors. So there's a little equation that we've documented on our software docs that is used to calculate the encoder scaling factor. If you're going to build your own farm bot or use different motors or encoders, then you will need to calculate your own encoder scaling factor using the equation on the docs. Again, once uh, this is set, if you're not going to modify your hardware at all, you won't need to adjust this setting. There are two parameters available for uh, tuning the stall detection algorithm. So one of them is called max miss steps, and that is just what it sounds like. It's the maximum number of steps, motor steps that your farm bot is allowed to miss before it considers itself stalled. So if, you, uh, if the farm bot runs into an obstruction, it's going to start missing steps, and that's when the motor is trying to move, but it isn't actually moving. And once the number of missteps reaches this value, FarmBot will stop moving its motor. So ideally, this number will be as low as possible. Uh, we have a default of five for this value, though you may be able to decrease it down to even zero so that FarmBot uh, stops as soon as possible. As soon as it misses uh, its first step, it will recognize that as a stall and stop. In some cases though, you know, if your tracks aren't perfectly lined up, if, if something is not operating perfectly, then having a higher value here, let's say three or five or even 10, can allow FarmBot to continue operating and not um, have any false stall detections. It gives it some wiggle room to be able to operate smoothly. The encoder missed step decay value is what allows FarmBot to ignore some missed steps that happen periodically. Uh, and that's due to limitations usually in the Arduino uh, hardware itself. So in case FarmBot doesn't recognize all of the encoder pulses, the uh, encoder misstep decay value will decrease the number of missteps that it thinks it has occurred every time there's a good step detected. And so that allows FarmBot to periodically miss the step and just ignore them. But as soon as steps happen, or as soon as steps are missed concurrently, all in a row, uh, and then once the max misstep value is reached, then FarmBot will, will stop moving because a stall will be detected. Again, you can read more detailed uh, descriptions of all of these parameters on the documentation hub at software.farmbot.io. Last, there are also some toggle switches for end stops. Uh, these would be used if you're building your own FarmBot or you wanted to add end stops to, to our kits um, for added functionality. Uh, so there's a few parameters that you can use there to, to enable or disable or invert the end stops. 
The last and most important grouping of parameters is the homing and calibration section. So in here are a few different buttons and also some toggle switches and other inputs to uh, dictate how FarmBot operates and, and how it finds its minimum maximum points. Homing is used to uh, tell FarmBot to find its home position. Home position is also uh, the same as 0, 0, 0. So it's the minimum point for the X, the Y, and the Z axes. Uh, so pressing the homing buttons will instruct FarmBot to move slowly towards its home position until it detects it, either using the end stops or the rotary encoders. The three calibration buttons will tell FarmBot to find the minimum and maximum points along an axis. It will do this by moving very slowly in a direction until it finds the physical ending point either with the end stops or the rotary encoders. And so then once it detects the maximum, it will move to the minimum point and uh, it will also measure the distance between the two in number of steps. And once you calibrate your device, the FarmBot will record the number of steps so that it knows its maximum size in the X, Y, and Z directions. You can also override this maximum size using the axis length uh, parameter uh, in case you want your farm bot to operate in a smaller area than its physical maximum capabilities. The stop at home toggle will instruct farm bot to stop at the zero position or allow it to move uh, beyond the zero position. So if normally you would want your farm bot to stop at zero, but maybe in some cases you want it to be able to go into negative coordinates. If you disable stop at home, then it will be able to move into that negative coordinate area. The negative coordinates only parameter will basically allow your farm bot to operate in negative coordinates rather than in positive coordinates. This is useful for the Z axis, where you might want your zero position to be with the Z axis all the way raised up. In this case, you would have negative coordinates only enabled, and then it, the, the Z axis would only move down into negative coordinates. It would never move up into positive coordinates or, or down into positive coordinates. So you can set your farm bot up with these parameters in any way you want, in any way that makes sense to you. The stop at max is just like stop at home, but it will instruct farm bot to not move beyond its maximum position as determined by the axis length value. And the timeout after in seconds function will instruct FarmBot to stop a movement if a certain amount of time has elapsed. Our default is 120 seconds. Uh, if you have a very large FarmBot or you operate your FarmBot at very slow speeds, you may need to increase this to allow FarmBot to complete its maximum movements. Uh, otherwise, you shouldn't make this uh, value super large because that could cause FarmBot to, to start moving and if something goes wrong, um, it might not stop moving for a very long time or might not you know, stop trying to move. So we recommend having a reasonable value here for the, the timeout. There's also a reset all defaults button. So in case you start messing with your farm bot and changing settings around and then farm bot starts acting weird and you wanna go back to what it was, you can just reset everything to the default values and uh, you'll basically start with a fresh installation of, of the firmware.